So what we've got in front of us here today is the new BT Home Hub 5 and I'm going to be showing you how to modify the antennas on this and really um, this really doesn't have any range issues so I'm not modifying the antennas because it's got poor range or anything like that it's just so uh, it gives us increased flexibility we can add different antennas to it so uh, we can uh, increase its range a little bit but it just makes it a little bit more of a flexible uh, piece of equipment so to get into the home hub it's uh, quite easy there are no screws at all it's just held in by plastic clips all down the side so you need to get yourself a pry tool and get into the sides and work it out just work your way around and you'll hear the clicks as it releases and once you've got the back off there are two Phillips screws here that we've got to remove and then that PCB will come away so the PCB antennas are actually etched directly onto the main PCB and the feed lines come out of the chip along here through this test point here onto some resistors here and then you've got your looped back antenna here and this is the 5 gigahertz and you've got one, two, three, like I've said over here is a 2.4 and you can see a big size difference between the two and this one's just got the two antennas so what I'm actually going to be doing is removing these test points here you can't solder directly onto these test points and break the connection to those resistors and the PCB antenna and solder the coax directly onto the feed line that goes straight down into this chip and then we can actually solder the ground plane to any of these uh, copper around here all this is ground plane all this so all this copper line around here is ground plane and we if we really need to we can scrape away some of this solder mask and solder our ground plane directly to that as well so I've got the macro lens on so we can have a close-up of one of the uh, test points that we're gonna have to remove now I always find it easier to remove these test points by using some tin snips and coming in at the sides and snipping away at the corners to remove it the reason I do that is because the soldering iron by the time you heat this up the heat can actually spread along this board and some of these small surface mount components can become desoldered and you'll end up losing them and obviously it won't work anymore so a lot easier to cut that away so what I'm hoping to do is cut that away and then cut the actual trace so all this on the, that side of the trace becomes redundant and we no longer use that and then we can solder our center connector of our coax our signal wire directly onto this trace here to feed into the chip so this is one of the test points removed and this trace here is now totally detached from this side but uh, it's a good idea to remove this copper from the sides because the sides are actually still tied into this side of the trace and it is really really small and if you end up bridging this when you solder on your coax to this then it's not going to work but this is now totally separated from this side and the PCB antenna so what I've actually gone ahead and done is scrape away the solder mask from this trace here so what I'm going to do is tin that up and then directly solder the uh, center of my coax onto that trace there and then what I'll do is the outer braid I'll solder directly onto this shield here and of course we have to be really really careful because this trace was never designed to be a solder pad so it's going to be really really fragile and we don't want to keep the heat on there longer than what we have to otherwise you can end up lifting that away so the connectors that I'm going to be using in this modification are these SMA connectors and I've purchased a few of these off eBay and they come pre-crimped with um, a length of coax already attached and it's the thin stuff like you would find in a laptop so what I'm going to do is cut that end off that high rose connector I don't want that and then strip that back and then uh, solder this directly onto the uh, PCB board and then this will be enough uh, length here in order for me to drill into the case and have that protruding out and then I can put a uh, dipole antenna or whatever I want on the end of that so what I've decided to do with this one is actually solder it on in that kind of shape there I just feel that um, doing it this way it's uh, going to be laid in a more natural position we're getting maximum um, surface area on the center coax here and then a good solder point on the outer braid here so what I'm going to do is tin those up in order to clean the uh, whispery bits off and then tin the actual trace up and this uh, side shield here and then hopefully then we can just apply a little bit of heat and uh, solder that straight into place there 
So I've got that first coax in place and I'm really happy with uh, how that's uh, been laid down. And uh, I've put a little bit of an extra solder onto this shield wire here to hopefully add a little bit of strain relief. But uh, the secret is to prepare that um, surface, that trace, and then clean it with some rubbing alcohol and put some tin on it, a little bit of tin on the wire as well. And then you could just go in with your soldering iron, uh, apply a little bit of heat, get that solder flowing, and then you've got a nice joint. And of course, I've also checked with the um, multimeter, just check continuity that these aren't touching because um, you never know with uh, a joint this small, you can get a little bit of... Um, solder sticking out and uh, touch that ground plane and then these are both shorted out and it's not going to work um, as well as it should and i've mentioned before about um, using masking tape it really is a big help masking tape when you're modifying things and uh, it's probably one of the most um, versatile products that i use in the workshop because um, you know i've tied this uh, back now stuck it down with some tape and taped it up on the back and that's just out of the way now so I've got no uh, risk of actually ripping that out because of course uh, there's no real strain relief on that so the only thing that's really holding it in place is that uh, shield there so stick it out of the way get it out of the way and then uh, you're not going to be going back and having to repair um, rip tracers and as for the size of the uh, soldering iron that I'm using I've got a fine chisel type on the end of my iron here and uh, yeah, it is a little bit wider than uh, what I'm working on, but this is uh, probably the best tip to actually use on uh, small traces like this, because you may be tempted to use tips like these needle tips, but uh, to be quite honest with you, if you get any of these, you just want to throw them straight in the bin because they're no use for anything at all, not even surface mount components. You just can't get enough heat on that tip down into the trace to actually do anything. So I've got the second one in place and again it's uh, worked out a little bit differently to this one. Um, basically all the coax is coming up this in this direction towards the top. So uh, that's what I have to keep in mind as well. I don't want to put too much strain on these joints once they're in place. But uh, what I actually did is the ground um, here I kept in um, half of the test point and actually soldered um, directly onto that test point because that test point is uh, connected to ground and uh, the center feed just went in um, in this direction here so uh, it worked out quite well but uh, it's a little bit more messier than uh, this joint but uh, I've checked it all and uh, they're not uh, bridging so uh, we're good to go so now we've got this final one to do and that's all the antennas done for the 5 gigahertz so the next stage is to drill the holes in order to fit the SMA uh, connectors through and I've decided to drill them on the back and what I actually did is just line up the PCB with the case itself and we've actually got quite a bit of room inside here because we've got uh, these components here and the uh, jack plugs that uh, need to fit through the back so we have got this big space so we haven't got uh, any problems with the uh, length of the SMA connector itself so uh, what I actually did is these are the antennas we're going to use. These are the three for the 5 gigahertz and the two for the 2.4 gigahertz. And these were originally um, 2.4 gigahertz antennas and I modified them for the 5 gigahertz. And uh, I've done a separate video on that. So uh, I'll link that uh, below in the bottom if you haven't seen it yet. But um, I didn't want them to be too low down say around here because if that is the case and we connect it here then what's going to happen is this PCB board will act as a reflector and you've got a large part of the antenna actually being blocked by the PCB so any signals coming out from this direction are going to get blocked by that PCB so it's just something to bear in mind when you're modifying things like this is uh, just make sure that uh, you're getting a nice clean signal um, 360 degrees all the way around the router itself because like I say if I put it further down it would be blocked by the uh, PCB because there's a lot of copper inside there. So I've just drilled the holes in the case and I'm getting ready to put it all back together now so what I'm actually doing is replacing that tape that I was using as strain relief with some hot glue and this is a little technique that I use that um, I think is a little bit neater and what I do is 
put a little bit of hot glue over the wires and then I take a metal spudger and just dip it in a little bit of rubbing alcohol and then press down over the hot glue for a few seconds and then take it off and you get a much neater job so here is the router with its antennas in place and I don't think it looks uh, too bad at all and uh, like I said at the beginning this is um, particularly uh, not a bad router it's uh, quite powerful but uh, adding these antennas which are got slightly more dB than the uh, internal PCB antenna so you're going to get better range anyway but uh, the main reason for doing this is to uh, add more options to the router so what you could do now is possibly add a directional antenna to the 2.4 GHz and another directional antenna to the 5 and uh, then you can actually direct them around your house and to cover any flat spots that you might have so that's uh, one of the reasons for modifying a router like this it uh, just makes it uh, far more versatile but I'm modifying uh, these routers for a small office environment I was asked to modify six of these so uh, I actually asked for seven so uh, I could actually open one up and see how I was actually going to modify it and um, this is the first one I've done and I'm not going to change anything um, I'm going to modify all the other six just like I did in this video and uh, this one I'm going to keep for myself and I'm either going to connect it to my network um, to work alongside my main router just to extend my uh, network because I am quite impressed with this router or I'll probably keep it for a test router but I uh, will definitely use this router and uh, like I say it's uh, quite impressive so I hope you enjoyed this and if you did uh, as always give it a uh, thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this and uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next one